What's going on everybody? My name is Jose from deepdatainvesting.com and today we'll be going over vertical analysis. Now really quick, if you haven't already, go to deepdatainvesting.com, subscribe there where we share everything that we've been learning about investing in the stock market so that you don't have to waste any time going through dozens and hundreds of different online resources and still end up not knowing how to invest in the stock market. So in the previous video, we covered horizontal analysis. Now this kind of go hand in hand or complement vertical analysis. So go ahead and check that video out. I'll leave it in the cards up above or in the description down below. So vertical analysis simply allows you to see the distribution of some kind of base figure like total revenue or total assets or liabilities, things like that in a financial statement. Vertical analysis is simply looking at all the ratios or the different proportions of the different items in there. Now, for example, if we look at a balance sheet and we perform vertical analysis on this, like let's say like the total assets, we can figure out how much of the total assets is allocated specifically to cash. Like for example, let's take a look at this pie right here. Now this pie represents 100% of the total assets of a company X. Each of these different slices here that you see are the different items in the total assets section. Now, if we take a look at this piece of slice, this is the cash. And by performing vertical analysis, we can determine how much of the total assets is allocated to this piece of cash. So let's say 20%. So vertical analysis is simple, but it's really effective in helping you understand different insights of your financial statements that you're looking at. Keep in mind that you can use vertical analysis in the different financial statements. That is the income statement, the balance sheet, or the cash flow statement. It doesn't matter. It's just taking a look at the proportions of something. Some other things that you can do with vertical analysis is not only just looking at the proportions, but try to understand why things are decreasing or increasing or why the company is allocating something to this part and why not more of this other part. Something really effective that you can do is actually compare this vertical analysis to previous years of the same company. For example, let's take a look at the total liabilities of company X in the previous three years. Now in the first year, you can see that 10% of the total liabilities is in accounts payable. And then the next year, you can see an increase of 20%. In the current year, there's 30% of accounts payable. Now, what's going on? Like, is this company sketchy? Well, it might start setting alarms off in your head. And ultimately, it just helps you understand what's going on with this company. So vertical analysis can be used in several different manners just to uncover different insights and understand the data. That's important is understanding your data. You can use vertical analysis to compare the proportions of two different companies of the same industry uh, doing the same things. For example, you have company X and you have company Y and you're trying to figure out which company to invest in. Well, you could take a look at their income statement and perform vertical analysis on both of these different companies. From there, you can see how well their company is managing their resources. Now that we got that out of the way, we're going to jump into the computer. I'm going to show you the formula that you can use for vertical analysis, and then we're going to apply it to a real company. All right, we'll see you there. And we're back. All right, so what I did, I went to the SEC Edgar database and searched up Tesla. I went to the latest 10K and copied over the values onto this Excel spreadsheet so that we can perform some vertical analysis. Before continuing, let's take a look at the formula. Now to find the ratios between different items, all you have to do is divide the value of this item and then divide that by that base figure. Now, for example, if we want to find the ratio between the total cost of revenue and the total revenue, all you have to do is divide the value of the total cost of revenue, divide that by the actual total revenue. And what do you get? You get a percentage relative to the total revenue. So by calculating Calculating this formula, you could see that the total cost of revenue is about 83% of the total revenue. So let's take a look at all the percentages relative to the total revenue. So with that being done, we get the set of percentages. Now up on top, we see the total revenue and that's 100% of itself. Going down, we can see the section of cost of revenue. We can see that auto sales is about 65% of the revenue and automotive lease is 2%. Now with that being said, the total Total automotive cost of revenue is 67%. Going down, energy generation and storage is 5%, and services and others is 11%. So if you add all those together, we get a total cost of revenue of 83%. So that gives Tesla a gross profit of 17%. Going down the line, we see our research and development is 5% of its total revenue, 11% for general and administrative costs, and others. Now, the point of this is that you can see the 
the proportions that each item takes of the total revenue. All right, so just for giggles, let's compare Tesla and Ford. Now I know Tesla is like totally different and you know, Tesla's electric autonomous vehicles and Ford is just the traditional automotive company. But this is just an example, just to execute this vertical analysis, comparing two different companies to each other. Now you can do this on your own and do it for your own case scenario here. Let's just figure out these numbers here together. All right, I went ahead and did all the calculations. So here on the left, you see Tesla and on the right, you see Ford. You can see a lot more detail in Tesla and then versus Ford, but let's just compare the big sections like cost of revenue. So you see something pretty interesting between the two. When you go to the total cost of revenue, total cost of revenue in Tesla is 83% of the revenue. And then in Ford's side, you see the cost of sales right here and it's 86% of the total revenue, which is pretty similar in the cost of sales from one another. Going down the line, you see that 7% is selling administrative and other costs for Ford, while in Tesla, it's 11%. You can continue doing this type of comparison between different companies and just getting some insight in how the company is managing the resources. So you can see that vertical analysis is a really simple concept, but you can grab some pretty interesting insights here. Now go out there, do your own vertical analysis. Let me know down below in the comment section how you are performing your vertical analysis and what kind of insights are you extracting from this analysis. Well, that's it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Go ahead and subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, go to deepdatainvesting.com, subscribe there because we share everything that we've been learning about investing in the stock market. Every two weeks, we send out an email and we release a video just like this one. Thank you guys again. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.